Hi, I'm Monsky Mouse, the singing reporter here, doing another one of our very special Monsky Mouse special report stories. Okay, and today we're in the Annex Gallery and we're looking at an exhibition and it's called Works Inspired by the Land, an exhibition of photography by Walter S. L. Holt on from the 1st of March to the 13th of March 1994. The Annex Gallery being up um, in the big visual arts space um, in the Fringe Complex. So let's have a look at the work and I believe Walt is over here who we can have a bit of a rave to. La -dee 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 -dee. Hello. Can I actually sit on there as well? Sorry, I know before I said I wasn't going to sit down. Would you like me to stand? Why don't you just sit and I'll squat? That's not what I said, but anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Who wanted to sit on this photograph? Log in a look. Okay. Walter, how are you? I'm oh, well, thank you. That's good. And here we are in your exhibition. What does SL stand for? Stuart Leader. <laughs> you don't need to know that. <laughs> just wondering. Um, so, works inspired by the land and a specific type of land? Uh, landscapes, I suppose. Um, the idea, it's, it's always been something special to me as a photographer, photographing the land and uh, needing a generic title or, or a theme for this exhibition, the land was an easy choice. So um, are all the works from Central Australia? All around Australia. They're all taken in the three years that I've been here. Um, there was one trip up to North Queensland in 92, another trip up to Broome in 93, and one or two from around South Australia. Mm -hmm. mm. And um, you've uh, also had an interface with other artists to, uh, to frame the works, like, such as glassmakers and silk painters. Is there a reason for that? Um, well, when I set up the exhibition, um, I knew really only one thing that I want to do exhibit before I left Adelaide which will be sometime this year. Um, I also knew that exhibiting alone uh, is not really a whole experience. So what I did was I... Why? Why isn't it a whole experience? What do you mean? Um, whole in what sense? It's just it only, it only comes from one being doing it that way mm. and I'm only one of many. There are many artists in this town that I've come across that I would like to work with. And so the idea was just to find a few of them. And I didn't know who they were at the time when I wrote the original um, publicity. I uh, just knew that I would have some, so the exhibition was called Walter Holt and Friends. Right. Um, so the first one that happened was a collaboration with Michelle, where we made this piece here, which uh, from, it's called- It's on the other side, Cam Prison. <laughs> it's called Dawn yeah. Free, because there was a time we were at Uluru, we got up at dawn, to watch the sunrise, and the sun rose about two o'clock that afternoon. Um, and the, the sun rose at two o'clock in the afternoon. What do you mean? Well, well the sun appeared at two o'clock oh, in right. the afternoon. I'm sure it probably rose. <laughs> Other people might have seen it earlier, but we didn't. Right, I see. Um, anyway, so so what I did was I um, scanned four slides into a computer, into a Canon CLC 500 digital copier, assigned yeah. them different as, positions. As you do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Assigned them different positions on the th on the um, photocopy, mm -hmm. and then mounted the piece on a piece of silk and added pressed flowers and things, and that was just the very first experiment. Mm -hmm. So from that we knew that we could do that sort of work. So that was one collaboration with Michelle. Um, and the next mm -hmm. collaboration was with Laxa Burrow, a friend of mine who was studying glass at Dunderdale, and uh, he makes these pendants and things. Um, he. Uh, is quite uh, possessed in his exploration of what glass can do in an artistic sense. And uh, so he was really glad to be involved in this. Um, the next person I picked up was Janny, a good friend of mine who's an architecture student, mm -hmm. well, he was at the time, he's just finished. And he wanted to make frames. He wanted particularly to explore with cast aluminium. Did you say he wanted, oh. <laughs> Frames. I thought you said friends. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to make friends. He wanted to yes. make friends. Yes, he's not, well, he's not too bad at that. So he, he'd, he'd found out some plans for a, a homemade aluminium smelter. 
And the idea was that uh, he'd build this smelter and smelt all the aluminium that was being left over from his father, father's workshop. Mm. Um, so that was the team. And at the time, I didn't necessarily think it was a photographic exhibition. I thought it would be exhibiting our four, uh, art in a in different sense. But the four pe three people I was working with were quite happy for their work to be a part of my photography. Mm. So all the exhibits in this are actually photographs supported Framed. by frames or surrounds or uh, spaces, I suppose. Um, and each of the people themselves has a, has a very close link with the land. They, um, they all feel the same connection that I feel, and so the title's still held. And so, and so their framing works were inspired by your photographs? Different Is that processes. True? Different, different processes. processes. Um, for example, do you want to talk about some of them? All right, show us a few of them in okay. particular. We've well, been looking at them with the camera. This one here. Um, oh, that we just happen to be looking at. How handy. Oh, wait we'll a sec, wait a sec. Um, <laughs> we chose the print first. Laxa went off and made some, made some glass for it. He brought the glass back. I had a look at that. It's I then gorgeous glass. sucked the print into a computer mm -hmm. and changed the colours to match you the glass. sucked it in. Is I this a new technique? Uh, <laughs> heard of yeah, scanners, sure but I haven't heard of the suckers. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so I took it into a computer and changed the colours to match the glass. And right. That, and that's how we got that piece. Other pieces... Um, it's a weird piece. <laughs> you might wonder what I mean by that. I do wonder what you um, mean by that. Um, I don't know what I mean, actually. I'll have to get back to you all on that one. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm take notice. This one, to so move over here, uh, shadows yeah. of tall trees. Um, first off, I chose the print. It's always been a favourite my print. Uh -huh. It was going to be one of the postcards that I was, I was going to produce to support the exhibition. But unfortunately, I couldn't get it off the computer in time for the postcard process. But anyway, we had the print. It was just sucked in there and you couldn't <laughs> suck it out <laughs> I again. I couldn't get it out. Mm. I couldn't get the sky right. So, so what I did was I, I, I did a very quick sizing for Laxa. Laxa took the sizing of the print away and made this piece of glass. Mm. And he made that by fusing two sheets of glass together with these strips of... Um, seaweed? <laughs> not seaweed. Uh, <laughs> it's actually strips of copper tape. Oh, wow. Yeah. And when it's fired... It bubbles and goes black. Mm. Uh, and he, he's perfected the process. This one here, is, is, that's the same process. Oh, if really? If he fires to a lower temperature, he can keep the colour. Right. You see? So as, as I said earlier, like, he's got a very deep control of, of, of glass. He really pushes it. Um, so then we had the two, and we passed it on to Janny. break it. <laughs> we passed it on to Janny to frame. Right. And he went hunting around, and he found these two bits of um, uh, western red cedar. Mm-hmm. And mm. part of Janny's framing is very often to keep things obvious. Right. It doesn't want to hide anything. Um, and so that's become a collaborative piece between three of us, and it's one of his favourites. Hmm. Um, okay. And do you want to show us um, one more and then your postcards? Sure. Before we leave you. Um, this one here is an example of. Oh, right next to the This one, Laksa did the glass first, and this is a technique that. Again, he's developed quite far. Um, it's not an original technique, but what one does is sandblast the glass, then spread a stuff called rabbit glue on it. And then rabbit glue? Rabbit glue. For gluing rabbits with? I'm not sure, but I think it's an animal product, because I tried burning it one time, and it stank. So it's is unfortunately an animal product. I don't feel particularly comfortable about that. But anyway, so you spread it on, sandblasted glass. You leave it for two or three days in hot sun, and it needs that hot sun. Um, and then you peel it off, and it shatters the glass like this, and you get this effect. Wow. So Laksa made the piece of glass this time, and he gave it to me and said, OK, find a print. I then went through my collection and found this picture, mm -hmm. um, which is one that I took a long time ago, but never printed large, although it was a very favourite, because um, it had a nasty scratch on it. It, had right. a, it had, There was a big black leaf across the mouth. So I printed it here, and I retouched it. Right. So if you went in close on this little spot, you'll see some of my pen work. <laughs> ah, that, that which I'm not very good at. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, and show us those. Uh, the uh, the, the are all the works for sale? Yeah, I was going to say that as well. Right. Um, and uh, <laughs> whoa, we're just getting a bit lost in amongst everyone. I'll just come around. 
Aha! Okay, whoops. Oh, I'm sorry, Walter, I just ruined your display. <sighs> whoops. Oh no, you might not have noticed. I just knocked some over oh. with my ear. <laughs> Ears are wonderful things to have, but sometimes they do get a touch in the way. This is my homemade post. Oh, oh, and another accident. <laughs> what a lovely day it is today. Okay, okay, tell us about these. Um, well, the idea was I didn't want to hold back on this exhibition. Right? I'd no it. holding back. Yeah, it's, it's something, it's my first in Australia. I haven't exhibited for about five years. I'm not a photographer anymore, I'm a filmmaker. Um, and I'd made that was a conscious decision to move away from photography because I couldn't make that a profession. Um, it didn't work. It was something that uh, I didn't. It didn't work for me to sell photography. So I became a filmmaker to use those same skills, and uh, left the photography for myself. And that is out of that that this exhibition has grown. So, not wanting to hold back from this exhibition, I it would have cost me about six hundred dollars minimum to do the sorts of things I wanted to do. What I did in the end is I spent about three and a half thousand dollars and two thousand six hundred of that went into producing these postcards the idea being it might take two years but they'll pay for the exhibition so what I did was that's um, a brave venture <laughs> I'm amazed I gotta, I gotta take a chance really because otherwise I couldn't have afforded to do any of this right so the idea is that each of these prints is in the exhibition um, and I'm selling them just for a, a dollar each or, or a set of ten for five dollars and uh, you can also buy them off SCAT TV and I'm giving to them cheap and they can sell them and keep the profits. So that's one place to go. So do we know where else they'll be distributed? Um, Seeing as SCAT's premises is about to become very elusive. You can still get the postcards from a variety of places. The Experimental Art Foundation is going to stock them for me. Um, the Urban Ecology Group at the Halifax Project. Um, the Wilderness Society will stock some of them. They won't stock this one because it has human interference in it uh -huh. all the, and all the rest are native so they're quite happy to stock them mm -hmm. they would have liked some South Australia ones as would I but as I say that print didn't end up in the, in the postcard process oh well so that's about so all that's it. sometimes the photographs came first and people worked with them to make the frames sometimes the frames came first and I worked with them to find the photograph that fitted um, Aesthetically. Yeah. And would you like to talk to any of the other involved? Well, uh, no, because we don't have time now. Oh, well, that's <laughs> Thanks, though. That's right. <laughs> but um, so this has been really interesting. Thanks for talking to us, Walter, Pleasure. and you've had lots of insights for us into the work. So if you want to come and see it, you've not much time, but you can always buy a postcard and look at one of these images forever. Or send it to someone else so they can look at it forever. So that's all for this Mouse Report story for the last chat show. Hope you enjoy the rest of the show. See ya! <laughs>